Welcome back to Fridays in the Field, brought to you by FNBO, the great big small bank. Excited to have you back with me in central Nebraska as we come back to Max Creek Winery here in near Lexington, Nebraska. And we're talking once again with Max McFarland. And Max, it was interesting, during our last segment, we were just coming into the budding phase. Things were starting to green up. It was cool and it was wet. Now fast forward several weeks and it's a completely different story. It is hot and it is dry right now in early June. So kind of walk us through what does this mean right now for the grape crop and your management of the grapes? Well, I, 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 I fear that I've missed something because here it's August and I, I completely missed June and July. And I don't know what happened there, but uh, as we were talking earlier, you know, we grumble a little bit about it's, it's cold, it's, it's wet, we need some heat, we need some heat, and boy, be careful what you wish for because we got it. Uh, uh, <clears throat> actually, uh, uh, the grapes like it a whole lot better than I do. Uh, they they kind of thrive in this. Uh, uh, the, the older established grapes, um, their root system is so far down, particularly here in the Platte Valley where we are, uh, so close to the, uh, to the water table, uh, they're pretty much sub irrigating themselves anyway we don't really have to worry too much about them so it's not like a, uh, a corn crop that the leaves start rolling up you know when it gets hot and dry and you got to hurry up and get the pipe out or the pivot going uh, we just uh, planted some replacement quite a few replacement vines which we do every year uh, and those little guys uh, they they take quite a bit of water for the first three or four years so we are scrambling to get the water today uh, just as you were walking in uh, we're trying to get the water to them. So when it comes to the quality or the vintage of wine that will be made this year, does heat stress, does that do anything to the vintage for the better or for the worse? Well, you know, you hear a lot about that. Uh, in Europe, France, uh, different, different places that uh, they, they, uh, uh, they purposely put those grapes under a great deal of stress because that, you know, the, the flavors are more intense, etc., etc. Uh, doesn't necessarily work that way with the kind of regional cold climate uh, grapes that we have here. Um, we don't particularly like to stress grapes any more than we have to. They have to get through an awfully nasty winter that's coming up, and so we want them happy and healthy and all of that. Let's talk now about the agritourism portion that really helps to make the business of, of Max Creek Winery. When you guys were getting started, what was one of the learning curves or maybe even the biggest learning curve that you had to overcome moving into the agritourism uh, space? Now, let me preface it by saying the learning curve was really steep on just every aspect of this. This wasn't something we had much background in, but I felt like we did our homework and, and I think we really did a good job knowing what we're getting into, knowing what to anticipate and the the viticulture, the, the grape growing side, the, uh, the winery side and wine making side uh, always uh, is you know, challenging uh, for me. Fortunately, uh, we have a, a son, the winemaker, who uh, he knows what he's doing. So, uh, But I, I feel like we've really been able to anticipate what's happening there. The one area that really took me by surprise, and I think maybe all of us by surprise, uh, was the whole events and tourism and that piece of it. Um, just how huge a piece that has become. Uh, you know, I guess we're novelty here in central Nebraska. We get that all the time. You know, you grow grapes where? Uh, and, and people come from, from miles and miles, and we've really become, uh, you know, a, a bit of a destination. It's been incredibly rewarding. Um, and to be, uh, to be a fairly significant tourist draw to Dawson County uh, uh, is very satisfying. Great. Now let's talk about the technical aspects of the wine industry. If you could explain to us, because it's used as our backdrop for today's episode, what is this piece of machinery sitting behind us? Well, this is a piece of machinery that when we bought it, I thought that was probably one of the least wise things I have ever done. Uh, and as it turns out, it probably is one of the best investments we ever could have made uh, in this industry. Uh, this is a fully automatic bottling line. And so when we were first getting started, of course, we, we didn't make a whole lot of uh, uh, wine. I think the first year we opened is like 1,200 gallons. And I think about three years in, three or four years in is when we purchased this piece of equipment. And so it's one of those things, kind of like a put it in agricultural terms, kind of like a combine, you, you use it intensely for a few days and then you put it away for the rest of the year. 
Uh, now it's one of those that we we're using constantly, and so it was a good move. But uh, it's a fully automatic body line, which means we put the empty bottles on, on this end. The conveyor brings it in. Uh, it'll rinse the bottles. It'll uh, uh, pull a vacuum and pull all the air out of the bottle and fill it with nitrogen. It'll come on down. It'll, it'll go around the wheel and fill the bottle with wine. It'll then level the bottle at precisely 750 milliliters. That's a, that's a government uh, legal issue. Uh, and it'll pull another vacuum, so what's left in terms of the nitrogen, most of that gets pulled out and it puts a cork in it. And now we're safe, it's sealed tight. And then it'll spin the label on it and kick it out the other end and we can do about, oh, we can do uh, 100 cases an hour. It's a very, very handy piece of equipment. <laughs> That is Max McFarland joining us once again here with Fridays in the Field, brought to you by FNBO, the great big small bank. Again, check out our full episode, audios, and previous week's episode of Fridays in the Field when you check out RuralRadioNetwork.com.